Welcome to the grand final of the Prospect Music Award 2023. The Prospect Music Award is the UK's most innovative new music competition and it brings together 25 artists who have been carefully selected out of thousands of musicians from every corner of the world. Out of thousands of acts considered of every musical genre and after a record-breaking prospect vote, just 10 artists remain. And now one of those will win the 2023 Prospect Music Award. Let's meet all of this year's finalists who are about to take over the world music scene. these musicians is no small task and this process begins and ends with our knowledgeable judges. Originally there is 25 nominees and they play a big part in narrowing it down to the final 10. One is the founder of the Prospect Music Award, music journalist EJ Scanlon and the other is a big name in the Nottingham music scene, Will Kent. So I feel like we can all agree that our lineup of finalists this year is really really brilliant but EJ what are you thinking? What are you feeling? I'm feeling like this is a fantastic lineup. I say it every year, but this lineup, like the Prosper lineup, gets stronger and stronger and stronger. The 25 that we have this year are also di like diverse, and the 10 that we're left with are so are so strong. And there's so many incredible acts, and I don't know who's going to take it this year already. I say it every year, but. I really mean it. No, that's true. It feels like such a good mix. It's really hard to, to sort of tell with this one, definitely. Mm, absolutely. And um, I want to say as well, just before we fully, fully get started, um, there's actually another judge who unfortunately can't be with us today. Um, she's she's at work. Um, but Rianne Me, she's from the band Marty. She's brilliant. We're going to be hearing, I think we're going to be hearing from her later on, aren't we? We are hearing. Absolute brilliant. Um, but yeah, she's here. Um, so I kind of know her thoughts and stuff. So I'll echo her thoughts when we when we do the things. Hello, Will. Welcome. How are you doing? How are you feeling about all of our nominees? I'm feeling good about this year's nominees. Uh, there's a nice range of genre and stuff like that. Um, obviously, I think this is the first list that I've been involved with for sure that's got um, a certain influence and what I mean by that is like there's a lot of like TikToky ones you know I think previously it's been quite bandy or um, you know some years we've had a lot of rappers this year you can you can definitely tell the um, Gen Z influence on the list I know what um, you're saying. which is you know not to be ignored no it's important no big influence big influence yeah. mm -hmm. so this is how the competition works 25 artists were selected for this year's Prospect Music Award and the judges and you at home voted for your favourites, ending up with our final 10. Voting for your winner closed on Thursday and the results are being counted and independently verified as we speak. 
During this special broadcast, we will be breaking down each of the finalists and discussing them with our judges in detail, finding out what went into their decisions of choosing each of these acts in the initial stages, and we will be unveiling all of our results for this year's Prospect Music Award. Got it? Good. Well then, let's start talking about our first artist. This is a pop sensation who captured people's hearts last year with her quirky and unique sound. It's Baby Queen. Baby Queen is a South African 25-year-old singer-songwriter living in London. Back in 2020, she signed with Polydor Records and then, in 2021, released her debut mixtape, The Yearbook. With her catchy and creative tracks, she made the long list for BBC Radio 1's Sound of 2022 poll. Her sound has magnetised many fans all across the world, but attracted even more attention by appearing on the soundtrack of the 2022 Netflix original series, Heartstopper. Last year in particular was huge for Baby Queen, making her place in this year's final truly no surprise. So, Baby Queen, it feels like, especially through Heartstopper, she's really grown her listener base. So what's what's your thoughts? What are you thinking? Um, yeah, absolutely agree with what you've just said now. As in, Heartstopper this year is a major, major series, um, has changed the lives of so many people all across the UK. And Baby Queen's music was definitely a big influence of that. I've not seen the show personally, but um, I know that I can just picture Baby Queens Want Me with that show, but at the same time, I've known about Baby Queen since before Heartstopper, and I know that she has got something really unique about her, really different, that she's got this really unique pop sound that you can't really picture anywhere else. I know that she's got a really good fan base. Like, um, I was in charge of the social media this year, and I had some very, very weird um, fan accounts. Um, I think the I had, fans. yeah, as in I had one that was like Baby Queen's elbow. Oh, okay, right. <laughs> um, like, I think there was like Baby Queen's boob or something right, like that. So it's going um, down a bit of a hole then. Uh, just a bit, yeah. just a bit. <laughs> but um, but she, like, she's got a really good fan base and her music is so strong and everything else. Like, she could be one to watch, I think. And even if she doesn't win tonight, um, I think that she's definitely got a fantastic year ahead of her. Definitely not the kind of music I would jump to listen to, um, but I'm happy that I've been shown Baby Queen. Um, as I say, not something I would have chosen to listen to, but it's got a very dancey influence. Um, I, I love dance music. And um, yeah, this is what I mean about the kind of TikTok generation, obviously, uh, you two were talking earlier about a, a TV show that was on Heartstopper, is it? Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's, I, I can see why this stuff is breaking through. And Baby Queen could easily be massive. Oh, you know, like yeah, yeah, Lady Gaga level or whatever. I can definitely see that. So, yeah, happy that Baby Queen is on the list. Can Baby Queen win this year's Prospect Music Award? We'll find out later on, but right now we're going to move on to a US pop punk band who has captured everyone's attention. This is Meet Me at the Altar. Meet Me at the Altar are a three-piece band created back in 2015. They have become a big name in the rock scene, but have stood out by signing to Fueled by Ramen, the record label behind the success stories of bands like 21 Pilots and Paramore, so they're already destined for great things. But just to go on top of that, the American pop punk band have made songs that are catchy, relatable, and that you can scream along in the car to. As a result, they have secured a very strong fan base, which has meant that they've headlined major music venues all across the globe. Meet Me at the Altar have solid fans, extraordinary live shows, a record label behind some of rock's biggest names, and they have the discography to prove it. 2023 has Meet Me at the Altar written all over it. So on to the US entry, Meet Me at the Altar. What are you thinking? Um, I feel like I'm gonna Echo myself again. Okay. <laughs> Definitely not the kind of music I would go and listen to. <laughs> right. um, but you know, as as I think the reason I think that, that EJ asks me back every year is because I'm quite good at just objectively listening to something and thinking, okay, obviously this isn't my kind of thing. But is it going to be big? You know, uh, meet me at the altar. I get why people that like pop punk like it, and I think this is the blueprint 
like this kind of music is the blueprint for, for pop punk. And, you know, we're going to talk about flow in a minute and how that they, they, they draw on nostalgia. This is very nostalgic music as well for yeah. a certain group of music lover. Um, and I can see them doing really well, especially in the public vote. I, th I think they just, they cap capture something which there's not a lot of at the moment, to be honest. I know we've got like the, the pop punk revival, Olivia Rodrigo and whatever, but if we're talking pop punk, you know, this is pop punk. I think they're brilliant, as in they've been on my radar for a few years now. They've been slowly but surely considered for prospects every year for the last, for the last two or three years right. now. Mm -hmm. um, and they have absolutely aced it. Like they're doing so, so well. They, I think they won a couple of he UK Heavy Music Awards as well. They've done some fantastic things. And honestly, to be signed by, um, if you were by Raman, I think that's how you pronounce it. Yeah. Um, and like obviously the the band behind Paramore were like one of the greatest rock bands of our generation. Mm -hmm. um, you've certainly got something there, I yeah, would say. Yeah. So I'm very feeling very optimistic about them. I know that I think this is the first time we've had like a full scale pop punk band in Prospect. I as think well. it might be actually, yeah. Yeah, I've I've not actually thought about that, but um, so obviously it's good that we've got something like that. And I know a lot of. I know a lot of people are really into that and um, they kind of bring that nostalgia with their music um, that you maybe heard when you were, when you were like a 2005 in your emo phase. Yeah. But then at the same time, it brings this new, this new sort of level to it that kind of feels really, really unique and different. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that's what really excites me about them. They're, they're going to go the distance. I'm very sure of that. Yeah, definitely. So Meet Me at the Altar are already breaking barriers within the music scene. But will they be able to become the first pop punk band to win the award? Only time will tell. But right now we're going to move on to our third finalist. This is an indie band who go by the name of Lime Garden. Lime Garden are four friends that have demanded any music lover's attention. They're described on their Spotify as jumping over genre boundaries to create a sound that is uplifting yet laid back. Their debut single, Surf and Turf, was released in 2020, and since then, the group has been covered in NME and had major festival appearances, including at Dot to Dot in Bristol and Nottingham. In October 2020, the group released their single, Bitter, which feels like a serotonin-filled gem, which could definitely be heard in the soundtrack of an indie film. Lime Garden seem ready to do great things in 2023, as on the 16th of May, they are headlining Omira in London. With what seems to be a strong artistic vision, Lime Garden are one to watch. So that was Lime Garden. Now, EJ, what is your opinion on seeing this band in the final? I think it's... I think it's a fantastic, I think it's brilliant that they're in the final, um, honestly. Um, I was introduced to this band um, by some friends of mine who work at the Bodega, um, good friends of the Prospect Music Award, shout out to those guys. Um, and they, like, it was at Dot Stop Festival, they said they were going, invited me along, went to go see them, and was absolutely blown away. They have such chemistry together. Um, they're one of those bands that you can just see instantly headlining like the big venues like at Brixton Academy in London and all of those different places. You can see that you can see them going to do some absolutely fantastic things. Their songs are brilliant. Um, Pulp has been on repeat all year for me. Um, I think they're going to do some fantastic things and I'm really, really excited to see mm -hmm. where they go. Yeah, they definitely seem to have a lot of potential. Absolutely right. Uh, I love Lime Garden. I really love them. I think uh, all, all I can really say about Lime Garden, EJ said a lot already, and I echo a lot that uh, EJ said, they are going to be Rock City big in less than two years. Like, I'm almost certain of that. They, I don't know, I should probably shouldn't say this, but they are kind of my winners for the, from right. this year's <laughs> list. They're, they're, they're definitely my favourite um, on, on the list. I think they are doing something that's, it's kind of been, you know, it's hard to say it's not been done before, but they're just ripping it up. They're just doing it really well. They're just doing it really it. well. That's, yeah, yeah that's, that's, <laughs> that's the thing I was looking for. Um, and already making a big name for themselves. They'll be all over the place yeah. by the end, by this time next year. Making moves. Making moves. Making moves. Making moves. Yeah. 
So can Lime Garden be our second all-female band to win the Prospect Music Award for the second year in a row? We'll find out really soon. But next up, we have a really brilliant band that has socialist issues at the heart of their music. This is Uninvited. Despite their name, Uninvited is the rock band that you will definitely want to be invited to watch. This four piece was formed in Glasgow, Scotland, and they won the BBC Radio 1's Live Lounge Introducing Search 2022, in which they performed their politically charged track, Behind the Black Door, as well as a cover of Pink Pantheress's massive track, Just For Me. They have four singles currently to their name and last year they headlined BBC Music Introducing to Sage at Reading and Leeds Festival. Uninvited have the opportunity to showcase their musical skills in a very cool way as they're supporting Nova Twins on their UK and Ireland tour which begins in February. This is a band that has made the world its oyster and their future looks incredibly bright. So similar to Lime Garden, Uninvited are another four-piece group. So I want to know your thoughts. What are you thinking? I love them. I absolutely love them. Um, I discovered them because um, they won the BBC Introducing Live Lounge session, like that Radio 1 did. Um, Bonnie Kemplay won it the year before, and now she's on tour with the 1975. Um, but so obviously I saw them from that and was absolutely blown away, um, especially with their song called Behind the Black Door, which is probably one of the most politically charged socialist songs I've heard in many, many years. Yeah, yeah. Um, they are absolutely incredible. The song itself is actually my third favourite song of last year. Mm -hmm. um, they're absolutely brilliant. Um, I had the pleasure of seeing them live, um, supporting, um, uh, supporting the, wait, sorry. I had the pleasure of seeing them live supporting fellow Prospect nominees, Crawlers, and they absolutely smashed it. Like, you know when you go to a concert and you feel you have that euphoria and a band gives it's you that It's like really impacted you, yeah. Yeah, absolutely, mm -hmm. but that euphoria in giving that in a, live, in a live show is something that's unteachable. Yeah. And the fact that they have that is, making me think they just have it naturally absolutely yeah. they're going to mm -hmm. do something incredible honestly i can't wait to see what they do mm -hmm. i think when i first heard them when i was listening to all the all the artists on this list i wasn't sure um these are probably like the biggest growers for me mm -hmm. they've grown on me quite a lot um ej's been raving about them since we've been doing this this process Big fan. um i can see why uh, they, they are they are good yeah and i think they they've they're, they're very welcome a place on this top 10 list. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Will Uninvited be invited to the Prospect Winners Hall of Fame? I'd really like to preempt that and say I did not write that line. Thanks. <laughs> Interesting choice of wording. Uh, but next up we have Cassiette. Cassiette has really dominated the rock scene in 2022. So let's take a little bit of a deeper look. 29-year-old Cassiette is a Chelmsford-born rock pioneer. Since making her debut in 2019 with her tracks Jean and Dear Goth, she has a variety of massive names backing her. For example, she collaborated with Frank Carter and the Rattlesnakes on their 2021 album Sticky, even featuring as their special guest at their headline set at the Download Pilot in 2021 alongside Idol's frontman Joe Talbot and last year's Prospect nominee, Lynx. She only got stronger as she landed herself a support slot on a date of My Chemical Romance's world tour with the crowd going wild for her incredible vocals and sensational stage presence. She released Sad Girl Mixtape in November and is described by Enemy as a bold, brilliant debut worth shouting about. This is an act who is going to have a heavy influence on the rock scene in the next 12 months. All right, so what is your opinion on Cassiette? I have been pleading with both Rianne and Will to put Cassia on this list this year because she was supposed to be up last year and did not make it. And I was absolutely furious because she is something so unique and different. Um, she released a song called Jean back in 2019, which is when I discovered her and thought she was brilliant. And then Dear Goth as well. Um, and then, 
she kind of went out like off my radar and then I saw that she was playing um, Download Pilot, um, which I was very lucky enough to go to. And, um, and she not only did a sensational live set on the Sunday, on the Friday she joined Frank Carter and the Rattlesnakes. Yes, um, yeah. Uh -huh. And oh my God, it was, she was, in, she was absolutely an incredible. An iconic collaboration, mm -hmm. if Ab there ever was one. Absolutely, and she has just kept getting stronger and stronger. Her songwriting this year has been brilliant. Mayhem is one of my favorite songs of the year. Um, like the Sad Girl mixtape, I think it's called. Yeah. Um, fantastic, that's really, really good. Um, she is gonna do so well, and obviously with the MyCam support slot, um, which I was there for, not to brag, I promise you I'm not bragging. Um, <laughs> You're not black thing. Absolutely not, just not at all. Um, but honestly, like she killed that as well, and she just keeps getting stronger and stronger and stronger. And I know that she's touring this year, and I'm definitely going to try and see her. Um, uh, but honestly, she's going to do some incredible things within the next year. Like, I'm so excited. Yeah, definitely. Cassiette um, is going to be big, I think. Mm -hmm. From what you were saying, already doing very well. Uh, can see that carrying on in that in that um, in that scene. And yeah, appropriate that Cassiette's on the list, I think. Um, maybe not one I'd root for right at the top, but... But like very deserving of the top. Very deserving. Anyway. I'm happy to listen to mm -hmm. that music. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Good, yeah. good stuff. Mm -hmm. We have reached the halfway point in discussing our artists, as it feels like the perfect time to discuss the last year in music. We've really seen a lot of artists flourish and become their own, and multiple of these come from the 240 artists in our Prospect alumni. Let's take a look at just some of these that have had a massive impact on the music world in the last 12 months. Let's talk Blossoms. This band, born in 2013 from Stockport in Manchester, have been on the rise since their creation. Back in 2016, they placed second in Prospect, and since then have headlined festivals such as Why Not, released their fourth album titled Ribbon Around the Bomb, and are cemented as one of the UK's most talked about live bands with a collaboration with Spice Girl Melanie C during their Glastonbury set and again at their headline show at Brixton Academy alongside Miles Kane and Rick Astley. With their latest album being described by Enemy as being packed with the dizzying heart on sleeve songwriting that the band have mastered over the years, Blossoms have truly made a name for themselves. Following their success as finalists in last year's Prospect Music Award, Leeds band Yardad have had nothing short of a brilliant year. Back in January, they released their debut album, The Overload, to critical acclaim, and festival-wise, the four-piece have been busy, as they played multiple this year, topping a study from ESNS Exchange as the most booked new act at European festivals. Even with releasing a debut album and performing at festivals, this group even managed to bag themselves a Mercury Prize nomination for The Overload. Back in 2020, we saw Nova Twins nominated for the Prospect Music Award, and since then we've watched the duo's rock sound and raw talent allow them to reach great heights within the industry, particularly as their critically acclaimed sophomore album Supernova, which was released in June, made it to multiple major music outlets' albums of the years list, such as Rough Trade, Clash Music and NME. This is no small feat for the London artists, but it does not stop there, as similarly to Yard Act, Nova Twins were also nominated for the Mercury Prize 2022. With their standout looks and memorable tracks, vocalist slash guitarist Amy Love and bassist Georgia South have been cemented as one of the greatest live acts in the world and are reinventing the worldwide rock music genre. Griff has seen incredible amounts of success and popularity following her 2022 Prospect nomination. After coming in third place, she released Head on Fire with fellow Prospect finalist Sigrid, who has also had an incredibly strong year. 
The singer-songwriter has accomplished great things in the last 12 months, from being nominated for two Brit Awards to winning two NME Awards. The 21-year-old has also toured with major players in the industry, including Dua Lipa, Florence and the Machine and Ed Sheeran. Griff has achieved so much in 2022, and we believe she will continue to have a huge influence in the world of pop going forwards. And because we have so many brilliant artists to speak about that were really flourishing last year, we did have to split this into two parts, so the second half of that is going to come a little bit later on. But going back to talking about our finalists for this year, next up we have Flo. They seem to be a bit of a Gen Z's version of Destiny's Child, and they also were the recipients of the Brits Rising Star Award. Let's take a closer look. London girl group Flo formed in 2019 and were instantly signed to Island Records. First releasing music last year, the band instantly rose in popularity, notably with the release of their debut single, Carvel Vox. The track gained attention on social media and truly shows off their incredible potential. With tracks that are really relatable, Flo could be described as Gen Z's answer to Destiny's Child. The group's debut EP The Lead released to critical acclaim, with Rolling Stone adding that the EP would vault Flo to stardom, leading them to become the first all-female group to win the 2023 Brit's Rising Star Award, as previously won by Sam Fender, Florence and the Machine, Georgia Smith and Adele. Flo are on everyone's radar, and they're going to take over the world. I mean, I personally am definitely feeling the Destiny's Child vibes from these three, but what are your thoughts? My thoughts are that we got this selection perfect. Like, um, Flo is just magnificent. They are doing something so different that hasn't been done in the 2020s as of yet, or the 2010s for that matter. Um, they're creating this new style of music while it's still feeling back, going back to the 1990s. And it's very much the definition of new nostalgia, um, very much like what Pink Panther S did last year, um, but just in a completely different style. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think that she, oh, sorry, I think that they're all absolutely fantastic, genuinely. And I think that the fact that they've won, that they've won the Brit Award for Rising Star and that they, uh, are up for the um, BBC Radio One um, sound of sound of list um, and every other award going. Mm -hmm. Like I think that just proves how all eyes are on flow. They are going to do something absolutely massive. Like they've just kind of come out of nowhere. Yeah. And I'm so excited to see what they do. Oh yeah, really. definitely. It definitely feels like they have a very bright future from what we've seen from them so far. Absolutely. I put them right up there when we started the process. I really like them from when I first heard them. Um, there, there's a gap in the market for it. I'm kind of surprised there's a gap in the market for it because they, I think a lot of people will just fall in love with them as soon as they hear them. So you'd kind of think that there was a lot of this stuff around at the moment, but when you actually sit and think about it, there isn't. So I'm happy that they are doing well. Obviously, they've already got all these awards to their name. Um, can they get the Prospect Music Award? Let's find I out. I don't know, later. we're going we're gonna <laughs> to find out. But um, I really like them. I think they're a really good group. Um, probably will be very big. Yeah. Yeah. So Flo really have been making moves this year and we're going to find out very, very soon if they have done enough to win at the Prospect Music Award. Now though, we're going to look at Crawlers and they have absolutely been taking over the globe. If, like me, you spend way too much time on the internet, particularly on TikTok, there is a high chance that you have stumbled across Crawlers. This Liverpool band formed back in 2018 and it is safe to say that they have really made their mark since the track Come Over Again trended on the app and they really seem to be thriving. Signed to Polydor Records, they released their self-titled debut EP in 2021 and have only gotten stronger. Crawlers have the power to impact you in big ways. They have lyrics that will make bold political and socialist statements, and in the case of songs like I Don't Want It, really make you want to rock out. 
Their debut mixtape, Loud Without Noise, charted at 22 in the UK album charts and was described by NME as confident, cool and exhilaratingly real. In the same article, music journalist Aaliyah Chandri speaks on how the debut mixtape from the Liverpool band proves that they have a knack for making even quiet moments feel huge. Crawlers have the ability to overwhelm you in a beautiful way with their raw talent, whether you are listening alone at home or if you're with other fans seeing them live. With what seems to be a real ability to shine on stage, this group have also achieved a sellout UK and European tour. But can they begin 2023 by winning the Prospect Music Award? We will soon find out. So EJ, regarding crawlers, where is your head at? My head is that I think they are phenomenal. Mm -hmm. um, Obviously, I discovered Crawlers like most people did um, with Come Over Again. Um, heard it at, um, at a music venue down here in Nottingham um, and was blown away by the song and they've only just gotten better and better and better. Yeah. Um, their mixtape, uh, Loud Without Noise, I think it's called, um, probably one of my favourites of the year. Um, like, they they've got so much going for them and they're going to do some incredible things and um, as I mentioned earlier with Uninvited I got to see Crawlers and I got to do a review of them and I don't think I've ever been blown away that that much by a, by a band yeah. that I, like, yeah. I didn't know what I was going into when I, when I was at that show because um, whenever I do articles I usually like to go in blind um, so for what I'm writing is like the initial reactions and stuff like that um, and I was absolutely blown away. And I, I, it's one of those gigs that I've been to this year that sticks in my mind. I think it's going to stick in my mind for a long time. And they're going to do something incredible. Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, it, it really feels like they have the potential to just have such a massive influence. Absolutely. Yeah. And they've got, they've got the fan base. And mm -hmm. obviously, for us putting them, like, for us, um, and for us putting them in the 25, um, they've got the critical opinion, the, the critical level as well. Mm -hmm. um, so I think they could potentially be a dark horse yeah. um, mm -hmm. in this competition. I don't know, but we'll wait and see. Yeah, I'm not surprised to see them in the final at all. Um, I think when I first heard Crawlers, I thought, OK, I've, I have heard this before. Like, I grew up listening to a lot of kind of indie bands like Crawlers. I thought, yeah, okay, you know, we've, I, I, I'm, I'm used to this. But then the more I listened to them, I thought, no, they, this is like this generation's, I don't know, 1975 or yeah, whatever, I think. Yeah. I think they, they capture like a youthfulness um, and that's important to, to talk about in a list like this for up and coming future music. And actually I'm surprised they've not been listed in more things like and um, Brits Rising Star and that kind of thing. Yeah, honestly, it is surprising because they feel so relatable as well, I yeah. think, to a lot of people. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So I think they're going to do well. Yeah. So there is just a short amount of time now before we find out who the winner of this year's Prospect Music Award is. And we want to see if crawlers will actually be able to crawl to the top again. I want to preface, this is coming out my mouth, but I did not write this. It's comedy gold. Yeah. We'll all sympathy laugh for that one. <laughs> Next up, though, we are going to look at Willow Kane. Willow has been doing some absolutely brilliant things, so let's take a deeper look. Signed to record label Columbia Records, Willow Kane first released the track I Don't Wanna Know in 2021, and since then has been reported on multiple times in NME. Sony Music describes how she has thrown her hat in the ring as one of the UK's most vivid, genre-blurring pop provocateurs, and this is a statement which we heavily approve of. Willow has shown her skills both through singles that she's released in the last year and through her 2022 EP Playground Antics. The six track release is undoubtedly your missing piece if you're just needing to feel a little bit more powerful and is one of the greatest EPs released in the last year. Her creative vision is growing stronger with the release of White City, Rat Race and her newest single, Mr Universe, featuring reggae, drum and bass DJ, General Levy. 
In addition to this, Kane also played at All Points East Festival 2022 alongside the iconic Gorillas and Idols. This creative is making exciting moves and we cannot wait to see what she does next. So regarding Willow Kane, what are you currently thinking? Are you surprised to see her in the final? I'm not surprised at all. I think she is a phenomenal artist. Um, she is one of those artists that I hadn't heard of um, prior to this year. Was I? She was one of those artists that I hadn't heard of prior to last year, um, but has always been around. Like she's always been there, and she's always been doing something or other. Um, and all of her material is absolutely fantastic. Like. Um, her most recent single, as of the day we're recording this, is Mr. Universe. Um, that is so good and really channeling loads of like dance music energy and everything else while it's still feeling very fresh, very current. Um, and honestly, she's going to go far. Like, I'm a massive fan of them, yeah. honestly. Well, I'm going to spill some tea Ooh, on, the, okay. <laughs> on the prospect process uh, for, for all the viewers. When um, EJ makes the long list for, for the judges to listen to, there's two songs for each artist that, that we kind of have to listen to to get a feel of the artist and be able to judge it on that in, 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 like in the first instance. The two Willow Kane songs that were presented to me were very different. Right. They, I, I think they were very different to each other. Um, and I, I thought one thing about the first one and a completely other thing about the second one. Both good, I really like them both. I couldn't believe that, you know, someone who was making music at like, you know, it's not like there were massive gaps between these songs. The songs could be so different. Um, she's exciting. Like that's, that's just, that's, that's an exciting kind of music making. Um, you know, you think about bands like even the Beatles or whatever, you know, they, they had such a short span of time as a band, but the, the difference in all the music they were making all the time was kept it exciting. And that's the same with bands like Arctic Monkeys and stuff. Um, so Willow Kane, I think, is, is like a bit of a start of that. Like, what on earth is going to come next from Willow Kane? So um, to answer your question, I think Willow Kane is the most exciting act on the prospect list I this year. I feel like those are two really good words to describe her. Exciting and versatile, definitely. Versa yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Nail biting. Nail biting. Edge of seat <laughs> stuff. So the big question is, will Willow Kane walk away with the prospect crown? We will soon find out. But now we're going to move on to a YouTuber who has truly inspired a generation of fans. This is no offence. No Offence is the 23-year-old musician that you will quickly fall in love with. Signed with Hopeless Records, Fence is a true talent. In addition to his singing ability, Noah's skill is shown through his ability to play the drums, guitar, bass and ukulele. And you know, when it comes to touring, Noah really does know what to do. No surprises though, as he toured in 2022, which was massively successful, and he will be touring again in 2023. This creative does not stop there though as he has been immensely successful on YouTube, amassing over 800,000 subscribers where he's spoken frankly on transgender issues and has been a major voice for the LGBTQ plus community. This is a man that is going to achieve some incredible things. So regarding No Offence, what are you feeling? I love No Offence. I think he's absolutely fantastic. Um, as in, I've heard, I've, he's a name that I've heard for quite a while. Um, I didn't actually really know who he was until um, I met you at Bodega one night um, and realised that he was performing um, because um, supporting was the Users and Sophie Powers, oh, okay. who are artists that I really like. Yeah. Um, and I just saw like a massive, massive queue. Um, so obviously he has like, a fantastic and very dedicated fan base um, but I like his music I like what he I like what he's doing I love the sort of young blood type of sound that we that we've got that he's channeling there yeah, yeah. Um, I think he is doing something really exciting and really different um, 
like his lyricism is really strong as well. Um, and also um, behind the scenes, like he's lovely as well. He's really, really great. Yeah. Um, but honestly, I would love to see him do well. I think he deserves it. And yeah, I think 2023 could have his name written all over it. Yeah, I mean, I know exactly what you mean. I think just generally as a person and both music wise, he's very, very engaging. He really is, mm -hmm. honestly. Um, he's great while he's engaged like hundreds of thousands of fans. And obviously I didn't realize until we selected Noah as part of the 25 that he was a YouTuber as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, so obviously that comes as part of it, but he's, he is just genuinely talented. He's not like, he's not just like a YouTuber who is doing music on the mm -hmm. side, like, uh, like some other artists may be, may be doing. Um, he actually has genuine talent. and you Lots can, of skills. Loads lots of, of skills. And you can really see his development all the way through. Um, so yeah, absolutely agree with you. Yeah. No Offence is not my kind of music. I'm sure there's a lot of No Offence fans watching um, and perhaps they won't be surprised by me saying that. Look, in the prospect list, you, as I've already said, I, you know, I know I've said a lot of this stuff anyway, you've got, to, uh, you've got to take the temperature of what people like and uh, no offence is obviously already big, you know, as you were saying about the show at Bodega, um, already getting massive crowds in all over the world, I would imagine, and that can't be ignored. No. But I would never put a no offence song on my playlist. Right, yeah, yeah. It's, it's no a, offense. No offense. <laughs> <laughs> it's the same thing. You can appreciate it, but it's not yeah. necessarily your own personal taste. No, that's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's definitely safe to say that Noah is really on the public side, but is it enough for him to win the award? Next up, we're going to look at Cat Burns. This is an artist that has had a massive influence and really taken the music scene by storm. Sony Music explains how 22-year-old musician Cat Burns draws upon gospel influences, pop inspirations, and a love of guitar and indie-led music. Sony also describes how Cat proudly cites Ed Sheeran, India Ari, and Tori Kelly as a few of her biggest inspirations. This singer-songwriter isn't a newbie when it comes to creating music. The EP Adolescent features six songs from the London artist and came out back in 2016, but jumping forwards to 2020, Cat's track Go has hit the nail on the head with a song that will get you massively in your feels. With a beautiful voice and standout tracks, Burns is a clear talent. The track trended heavily on TikTok and as a result, it peaked at number two in the UK singles charts, which is a massive achievement for any musician. The song has also been remixed by the first ever Prospect champion, Sam Smith, as they collaborated with Burns on the song. That success led to Burns supporting our second Prospect champion, Years and Years on Tour. Cat was also nominated for a 2022 MTV EMA for Best UK and Ireland Act and for the 2023 Brits Rising Star Award. Cat Burns is ready for 2023, but are you ready for her to take over? And lastly on the list, we have Cat Burns. What do you think? Yeah, um, Cat Burns has done really well already this year. I think it was natural that she was going to be included in this year's prospect list. Um, touring with Sam Smith, touring with years and years. Just massive people. Massive people yeah. to, to be touring with uh, and just generally being mates with. Um, she's, she's got a, a full career ahead of her. And um, I'm sure she's she's not worried about that. No. Uh, it's going to be very good for her. Um, yeah, it's good, easy, easy music. Yeah. yeah. Look at the year that she's had. She supported Ed Sheeran on tour at one point. Um, supported years and years as well. Um, collaborated with Sam Smith. Um, so, like two Prospect Music Award legends in there already. Um, but Cat Burns was actually supposed to be was considered to be a nominee last year right, before okay. like so go was out and i think it was i forgot what the song was but really caught my attention but mm -hmm. it's not a one that she does too much anymore right so a similar boat to cassiette then was yeah absolutely it, like, last year um absolutely but the effect that cat burn like has had on members of the public this year is phenomenal mm -hmm. like you can't 
you can't do anything else about it. Like she's fantastic and she's doing so, so well. Mm -hmm. And my God, like she's incredible. Yeah. Um, and yeah, 2023, it's got a name all over Cat it. Cat Burns is going places. Cat Burns is going places. So that is it. That is all of our finalists for the Prospect Music Award 2023. Very, very soon we are going to look at the results and find out who our champion is. But right now we're going to go a little bit back to 2022 and look at some more Prospect alumni that really have been taking the music industry by storm. George Ezra has achieved so much since his 2013 EP, Did You Hear The Rain? In 2014, Ezra received his Prospect nomination, and now it is safe to say that his name is known and loved all around the world. In June of last year, the 29-year-old singer-songwriter released his third album titled Gold Rush Kid. It debuted at number one in the UK charts and was certified gold, meaning that 100,000 copies have been sold. One of the tracks on the album, Green Green Grass, also peaked at number three in the official charts. Tour-wise, the Budapest singer also had a sellout UK tour, massively making 2022 a year for George to remember. Also smashing it last year is the Bath Born Pink Panther S. Coming in fourth place in 2022, Pink Panther S's name is likely to be known by you, your friends, and your neighbour's cat. After the release of her highly anticipated mixtape To Hell With It in 2021, the 21-year-old topped the BBC Radio 1 Sound of 2022 poll, and as a result of that and her influential sound channel on TikTok, she released a new three-track EP, Take Me Home, in December. Known for being a big influence in the new nostalgia subgenre, Pink Pantheress has also collaborated with Miura Massa, Sam Gallatry, Lil Uzi Vert, fellow 2022 nominee Shy Girl, and one of rock music's rising stars, Willow. It is safe to say that this is just the beginning for this incredible producer. Back in good old 2018, Sam Fender took his place as runner-up in Prospect, and he has achieved nothing but amazing things since. Nominated for not one, not two, but three Brit Awards and winning Best Alternative Act, which was voted for by the public via TikTok, has skyrocketed his name to unimaginable heights. Fender's sophomore album, 17 Going Under, has grown in popularity. The record was nominated for the Mercury Prize 2022 alongside other past prospect nominees. Last year also saw the Scouser sell out his first ever arena tour beginning in March and headline multiple festivals across the UK. As if this has not been impressive enough, Sam has also been announced to headline Newcastle's St James's Park for two nights in June and is one of the headliners for Reading and Leeds this summer. And finally, let's take a look at what our 2022 champion, Wet Leg have been up to. In April of last year, the indie rock band released their self-titled debut album, which was hugely successful and reached number one in the charts. Wet Leg have also been a major festival highlight of 2022, and last year had tickets be heavily in demand for their sold out UK tour. Sitting in a very cool club with many other Past Prospect nominees, last year Wet Leg had their album nominated for the Mercury Prize. With early predictions that they could be in with a shot of winning some Brit Awards in February, the Isle of Wight duo are ready to conquer the world. And that was just a small selection of some of the artists from past Prospect alumni that have done some incredible things in 2022. But now, moving on to this year, we're going to find out where our artists placed going from 25 to 11. Now, the way that this is done is the judges' votes are combined with the public voting, and originally it was the 25 and it went down to 10. So we're going to look into that now. Can I have an envelope, please? Thank you. Right, are we ready? Yes. So, at number 25, we have Dylan John Thomas. At number 24, we have Masterpiece. 23 is Alice Sean. 22 is Michael Aldag. 21 is Medulla. At 20, we have Dexter. 19 is Male. 
18 is Cruel Sister, 17 is Katie Baser, and then at 16 we have Perry and Tommy, 15 is Hot Milk, 14 is Jessica Winter, and then at 13 we have Dochi, 12 is Sad Night Dynamite, and then finally at 11 we have Dylan. Now I know that you have met and stared at the lovely faces of EJ and Will throughout the show, but as we have mentioned, there was actually a third judge who couldn't make it to tonight's final. Rianne is Prospect's newest judge and is a producer and musician, famous for appearing in one of Radio DJ and BBC Music introducing favourite bands, Marty. However, we did catch up with her before recording the final and here is what she had to say. Hi, I'm Rianne. I'm a musician and songwriter. I'm in the band Marty. Um, and I'm one of this year's prospect judges. Um, for me, I I really liked that I went into it blind, and so I didn't really know any of the artists or the songs um, beforehand, so it was just really cool to get to hear some new music from some really great artists, add some to my playlist, um, and it was really exciting to just see how, how the uh, judges fell um, on the list, so yeah. Um, so as we were like narrowing it down, my main thing was versatility. Um, so I scored them higher <laughs> if, if the, they showed more versatility from their first track to their last track. Um, but I also just really liked it when I could hear the development of an artist from their first release to their latest release in terms of songwriting, musicianship and production. Um, so I gave them extra points if, <laughs> if they had clearly developed their skill um, sufficiently. <laughs> For me, I would have to say Dylan, um, just simply because their music is very much up my alley. Um, it's very clear cut um, pop. Um, I think the songs are really well written. Um, stuff that I would just listen to um, all the time. Really, I've added some to my playlist. I thought they were really good. Um, I would recommend um, Flow. Um, personally, I have always loved girl groups as a concept. I love the teamwork that goes into it. I love it having, you know, multiple voices meshing together succinctly and creating a really nice sound. Um, and I think we're in need of a new girl group um, to make it big. And, you know, everyone loves a bit of Destiny's Child. So this is the new Destiny's Child, not to compare, but I think it's a very clear um, comparison that you can make and there's nothing wrong with that comparison. I would be very honoured if that was a comparison made about my music so. Uh, I would like to see Flo win. Um, as I say, I think we're in need of a new girl group and they're clearly on the up at the moment. They've just won the Brits Rising Star Award. Um, I just think they're very cool. Their songs are very earwormy, they stay in your head. I think they're very, um, yeah, very clean songs. Um, that being said, I think, uh, I do think Crawlers are probably more likely to win, um, this time around. Just, uh, they were very, uh, obviously, from a judge's standpoint, our top artist, um, they're doing something very different, very cool, um, and, yeah, again, they're, they're on the up as well, I think it's, um, it would be between those two, but I would probably just give the edge to callers. Thank you, Rianne. So it's time for the moment we've all been waiting for. From thousands of artists to 25 to just 10, we are ready to announce the winner of the Prospect Music Award 2023. Our independent adjudicator has been working hard throughout the broadcast and has delivered the results to the venue securely and safely. So no one in this room knows who our 2023 winner is. All bringing something fantastic to the table, it truly is anyone's game. 
In a moment, I will hand over to our prospect CEO, EJ Scanlon, to announce the result. But first, let's recap on exactly who our finalists are. Thank you so much to Atalia Hewing for her fantastic hosting throughout tonight's show. I'm not going to do a big thank you, but I will say this. This has been our biggest year ever. We've had hundreds of votes from all across the world. And that means so much because as a small little competition, the more people that know about the Prospect Music Award, the more people that will know all about our acts. And that is the most important thing. So thank you to every single person who voted and every artist who, who was able to share everything on social media. And thank you to everyone who shared anything anyway. I will leave you with one thing before I do announce the results. And it's the next year, I still can't believe I'm saying this, but next year, we will be 10 years old. It will be 10 years since we started this competition. And to be at this point now, really feels incredible. So thank you so much um, for letting us carry on and being interested. And I promise that next year we've got a couple, maybe have a couple of things in the pipeline. So keep an eye out for that on our social media. Should we announce the results? I think we should. I can unveil that the artist in third place in this year's Prospect Music Award is. Flow. I can unveil that the artist in second place of this year's Prosper Music Award is Baby Queen. So that leaves eight acts. And best of luck to all of you. Here we go. The winner of the 2023 Prospect Music Award is Crawlers. Fearless. <laughs>